What's up Rockstars, how's it going today? Another news video, I got some stuff I've never shown you before, some new stuff coming up, some delays, some cancellations, there's a ton here, especially some of the big items I've been advertising for months now has been pushed out to next month, so let's figure out what's going on right now. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I really greatly appreciate it. If you want some cool benefits, some exclusive behind the scenes looks, some updates, some polls, some other rewards, some stuff I send out, etc., there is a link down below. Even a dollar a month helps out the channel a ton, and I hope you get some good benefit out of it too, like this entire channel and all the videos I make. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually jump quickly into the sponsor of today's specific video, Skillshare. Uh, there is a link down below. The first thousand people get a one month free trial to their premium membership. And let me tell you, it is worth it. I subscribe to this personally. I use it all the time. You guys know that. And here I'm going to share again something that I want. You will probably see benefits from this because I'm constantly kind of adding to my skill set as a, as a person. I can take this to anything, not just YouTube, of course. But uh, actually, uh, another one from Polymatter, actually, even does a great job of these. I've shown off a few of his now. This is making animated YouTube videos. But one of the biggest things that I find helpful from a lot of these is they will recommend products. And there are some great products. And I've never even heard of them before. So here he's talking about one that is a one-time purchase. Because like, that's a big thing. And he knows that. That like, hey, like this can take some like... Uh, it, the cost is high if you go to like Illustrator or something like that. Um, he also did one for writing the script that was great as well. Where he, he showed one of his product projects that he was... This right here. Amazing. I've already linked, uh, I've already like bookmarked it. So I'll be, uh, fiddling with that a little bit too. But yeah, when it comes to actually just animating and creating the shapes was the biggest thing for me. Essentially, he's showing like how you make like animated videos like what he makes, right? Um, and I'd always kind of wondered, not necessarily how to move things around. I know how to do that, do it with my like patron list at the end. But, like, how do you make that helicopter and everything else like that? He showed how, uh, he kind of breaks down a scene and does stuff like that. Super useful. It was super quick too. It was just a, you know, a, a short few minutes and now I know more about how to do something and I've improved my skill set. Guys, there is everything on Skillshare. You search for it, you're going to find something. And, uh, yeah, it's just a hugely beneficial for your life, something that's actually kind of important, and you can get it all for free. Link down below in the description for that one month free premium trial. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring it. Guys, thank you for being awesome community. Let's go ahead and dive into the video itself. Now, I'm going to start out with Resident Evil, the board game. Yes, I am a backer. You can see it there. I put my money where my mouth is. Um, I just played this again. Uh, because my wife, I still had it on the table. I've been busy. And don't judge. <laughs> and my wife was like, I want to play this. Because I'd played it with my son. I'd played it with the devs. And then I'd kind of walked through it myself. That's kind of my prep for the video. Like, and like I said, it's kind of a, like a short-term view thing. It wasn't a whole lot of you know, content there. But we played it. And it ended up being such a different experience. Uh, there was a room with an item that we really struggled with, with my son and I. A guy spawned in there. There were no spawn in there. We just freely went in there and got that. But then I had, like, the worst combination. Like, I went into a room with two actions left. It spawned a whole bunch of guys, and it was a disaster. And we were running, and I was out of all of my ammo. It was messed up. We still did great. We managed. We got through it all. We got all the items too. We didn't run out of time. It was awesome. Seriously had a blast. She loved it. So it's wife approved. For you guys who know my wife, you know that's a big deal. So uh, yeah, no, wife approved here. Um, a lot of fun. Just a fun game. Uh, what, what, what can I say? So anyway, yeah, I'm at the Bravo pledge though. Uh, because, and I'll, I'll kind of explain this briefly. Uh, da -da, da -da. A bunch of cool stuff. Yes, interesting, nice. 
Okay, all right. So first of all, they have this rookie Rebecca uh, for the all-in and return backers. As I cannot be a return backer, my only option is an all-in, and I hate all-in exclusives. I hated it before Steam Forge Games did it here, and I'll do it, for, uh, and I'll hate it for the next company that does it too. I do not like all-in exclusives. That is not good practices in my mind. You can word it however you want. You can think about it however you want. At the end of the day, you're saying back it for everything, or you don't get this. I don't like that. Allow me to purchase Rookie Rebecca for 10 bucks or whatever. Um, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't care. Either way, you're not forcing, you're not trying to um, FOMO people into $300. You should never FOMO people out, out of $300. You should earn their $300, um, which uh, like you, you have. Like there's a ton of people here. 2,905 people, okay? And I doubt that's because of Rookie Rebecca. This is because people want everything you're offering, which is great. Don't do this crap with Rookie Rebecca. That, I don't like it. I don't like it. No matter what the company is. That's, that's dumb. Don't like all-in exclusives. Okay, so let's talk about, um, where I'm at right now. Uh, essentially, with the whole move and everything, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm laying low. I don't even know where addresses are gonna go here for a little bit. So, um, <laughs> I'm mostly doing pledge manager stuff. So I'm definitely getting the Bravo pledge. I'll probably be adding more stuff to it because my wife, like my whole family loves it. So it's a, it's a done deal on that, right? Um, these expansions are not Kickstarter exclusives. So worst case scenario, I could grab these at retail. And if I grab my retail, I don't have to pay shipping and they might even be on sale. Now, I don't know what the MSRP is though either. If is $50 less than the MSRP? Um, and if so, is it enough to offset the shipping? If so, then maybe it's about equal. I'm not sure. Um, game trace I probably won't get. I'm fine storing my cards in some other way. A re retro pack is just rethemed cards. It's cool for people who want it for $30. I, I don't just need more cards. And I'm not saying that's overpriced. Cards are expensive to produce. That's why cards, card games still cost money. And 30 bucks for a card game isn't actually that bad, especially for all, this is cards for everything. So, um, dice pack, maybe. 12 bucks is a bit much for them, but it's coming in a cool little vial. Um, it, it, it depends. They are all custom, at least, so that's nice. Neoprene mat, probably not, um, just because, I don't, I don't know. I'd almost rather have dual layer than, than not, um, just so I could put, you know, the health token, uh, you know, it's not sliding around or anything like that, and the items fit in there a little bit nicer. Um, so, I, I don't know. It, 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 it's whatever. 25 for four isn't that bad. That being said, I will never buy a neoprene mat that's not stitched. So, so there's that. Terrain pack, I wish it wasn't 55. I love the corpse tokens and I love the doors because those replace tokens on the board. Um, but then there's a lot of stuff like railings and other stuff like that and stairs that seem to just be aesthetic and I don't care about those at all. I, I'm not trying to pimp out my, uh, my, my, my stuff by adding more stuff to set up than I need to. But a token upgrade is awesome. So I wish there was a token upgrade only thing and maybe railings are going to be that way. But from what I understand, I think Sherwin was saying that essentially the, they're just there for looks. And I don't, I don't want to buy it just for looks. So that's kind of unfortunate. Monster box, perhaps. It depends. Um, cause that is gameplay related. And that's it. So yeah, uh, the expansions, by the way, though, are fantastic. Let me scroll down to these expansions here. Um, definitely recommend them. Whether you get them now, I think I need to scroll up, or later, they add six scenarios each. There are 19 scenarios in the core pledge and the core box. So another 12 through both of them plus four bosses is actually quite huge. Yeah, I must have skipped over it. It's probably up here. Yeah, so six new gameplay scenarios with special rules, and then also the bosses, and then you get um, how many new tiles? There's like nine new tiles or something like that. Um, does it say new tile art or I, I, I thought it said it somewhere. There's like, oh, right here, 11 double-sided tiles. And 100 plus cards. And those cards you can probably put into the core as well. At least the majority of them. So there is a, there's a definitely, if you, if, if you can foot it, I recommend it. I think that's a great. So I might just be adding this to my pledge. Uh, but if so, it'll probably be in the pledge manager, not currently right now. Okay, moving on. We have Marvel Dice Throne. Over a million. Congrats to them. This was a funny one. So I had a roller coaster of emotions. As you guys know, I was planning on, if I was going to dive into Dice Throne, it was going to be with this one. However, I don't really care for like half the characters they picked, which is kind of unfortunate. 
Um, and, and, uh, okay, so first, the first thing I see is Scarlet Witch, unfortunately, because I, I don't like the art style almost at all. Like, her eyes on her side of her face seem weird. Like, it seems like an alien to me. She doesn't look human to me. Like, that's not a, that's not how anatomy works. So, like, I'm not big on the art style, which is un- unfortunate because I, I, I love the comic book style, and if this this is more like an animated series style, so um, anytime I see Marvel, I want the comic book stuff. That's what I'm looking for, not not this. Unfortunate, but I can get past that. Um, but then they have like Black Widow, Doctor Strange, Loki, and Captain Marvel, and Black Panther. So no Iron Man, no Hulk. You know, not not even a lot, like like they're not even doing Avengers stuff here. You know, it's like 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 they got Spider Man, so I guess there's that. They got Thor, so there's that. Um, they picked them based off of the abilities they could do so for gameplay. That's cool. But at first, I was raging. I was like, oh my gosh, I guarantee they're just gonna have a Captain America expansion and an Iron Man expansion. They're gonna be in two separate expansions. So you have to buy all both, and they're just gonna spam everything because that's what you do when you get an IP. But nobody told Dice Throne this. And so this is all you're getting. You're not getting Iron Man. You will not have Iron Man in Marvel Dice Throne. Or Captain America. Or any of your, like, typical favorites. Unless they happen to be one of these, uh, you know, kind of some A-list and a lot of B-list uh, uh, <laughs> comic book heroes here. Um, kind of interesting. It, it, it's, um... I wonder if there's going to be future campaigns. I'm not sure. I just feel like it's it's almost such a waste in my mind. Because uh, I was ready to get some. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. It, it's there. It's also $84. And I... My understanding is it's pretty much Battle Yohansi, which is cool. And it sounds fun. But, in my opinion, this kind of stuff is filler game. And I same thing with Marvel United. When they added the minis and it cost a little bit more because of that. It's like... For a filler game, I'm typically in like the $30 range. $84 is out of the question. I'm never spending $84 on a filler game, um, as, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to have, you know, my friends drive over on their Saturday off to come play Dice Throne for four hours. Uh, it's just going to be something that you just toss on the table while you wait for pizza or something like that, maybe, or, or whatever. And, uh, at that point, 84 plus shipping plus taxes, you know, depending on where you live, just not, not for me, which is unfortunate because I was kind of interested in this. Maybe they'll do an advent. I know there's a a dice run adventures. I wonder if they'll do a Marvel version of that. I wonder if I'm more interested in that. You guys let me know what the adventure style one is. Is that something you think is more my cup of tea that I'm willing to maybe pay up a little bit more for? It looks nice, by the way. Like, like the components and the dice all custom and the cards look beautiful and like, it looks, it looks great. Just, uh, it's priced me out for what it is. Damnation, the gothic game. This looks super cool. Uh, so a patron of mine showed me this because of the art style. And the art style is awesome. If you like Darkest Dungeon, you might be interested in this. It's not Darkest Dungeon art, but it, 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 it gives me a lot of the same feels, if that makes sense. And some of this is the style. This is a competitive PvEVP, uh, game where you're playing all these, like, evil people fighting each other you can like turn into dracula and then attack other people there are other roaming people in dracula's castle that's also attacking you there's dangers in the room there's items there's abilities each unit is each person's different if you do die it's not player elimination you then get to haunt the other people and maybe even come back to life there's a lot of good and cool and interesting stuff here and i dig it it's cheap too 55 bucks uh, for this, and, and you get quite a bit. It has, uh, like front and back si- standees. I love the back side of the standees right here. I think that's super cool. I dig that actually. That, that's pretty nice. Especially because it's like this lady here, right? She's holding the knife behind her back. Love it. I think that's awesome. And the, again, the artwork is gorgeous. I love it. This, uh, it looks super cool. The, 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 the kind of dark, but then like heavy, like outlining and, and, um, coloration just pops out and, it looks cool. Uh, so yeah, I dig it. I dig it. I don't think it's for me just because with the, com- the competitive games we typically like isn't like this, if that makes sense. 
Um, we tend to, to like more, more straight PvP than the PvPVE stuff. I think I would appreciate this and I would totally play it with you. You right now, if you had it, I would totally play it with you. But my gaming group and family probably wouldn't very much. So if it's not going to go to the table, I don't need it on my shelf. So, um, won't be for me, but that is awesome. 55 bucks too, and you can get in there. You can get an expansion and you're still only at 76. You can get, even like, wait, there's, a, oh, there's a Dracula bust. Uh, don't worry about the Dracula bust. It's, it looked kind of enemy. Uh, but maybe it could have been the painting job they did. Either way, super cool. And I, uh, they're, they're already at 33,000, which is great for, you know, what, who, let's see, Black Letter Games. What was their first one? What was their first one? What did you do beforehand? The same thing that was canceled. So congrats on funding. Uh, first game doing quite well. Keep it up. It looks like you got a cool product. Okay, Senjutsu Battle for Japan. I am not backing this. If you guys saw my review, I did not enjoy myself. I, I did. It was, it's not for me. Um, I didn't like the programming part of it. I don't like the card counting part of it. And uh, I don't I don't like the inability to... Um, uh, what, what, what am I trying to uh, React to uh, other stuff because you all flip at the same time. And so it's like, well, okay, I guess I'm doing that or whatever. Um, and I tend to really prefer always having options available to me. One of the reasons I didn't like Rising Sun is because I didn't like the mandates. I didn't like people picking the two recruit options. If I wanted to recruit, I want to be able to recruit. That kind of thing bothers me, right? And so the Sinjutsu has a little bit of that where sometimes it's like, well, I guess you're just not going to be able to block or, well, you have an attack card, but no movement and nobody's near you. So you can't attack or, you know, the, the anyway, it, it's just not for me. I did play the dev on Tabletop Simulator on Monday, as promised. So I saw everything. It does not change my opinion on it too much. It is a better game. There is a lot more stuff and they've definitely put a lot of feedback and thought into it and it has improved still not for me though because of those kind of core concepts it is very much a card counting game it is very much a programming game and i don't really care for either of those so just not for me i thought it would be i really did which is why i thought it looked cool which is why i told you guys about it which is why they said hey do you want to have a copy and i was like yeah sure it looks awesome it ended up not being for me that's okay it is for a lot of other people uh, it looks like they're doing great here. I think the only thing I would say to kind of finalize all that needs to be said on this is, um, let's have some respect for critics and not, not, not just me. Uh, it, it, assume I did a good job because it is my job to do it. And I played it many times, several times even the even the solo mode which i don't even play ever usually i played it twice because i wanted to make sure i was doing what i could to play as much as i could of the game uh to tell you guys about it which is why i then did the monday thing which is why i'm telling you now it didn't change anything but anyway just let, let's, let's calm down on accusations on a for sh for shame koa or anything like that like i i review what i'm sent <laughs> calm down people Okay, next up, City of the Great Machine. It is now on a Kickstarter again, 69000 I don't remember what it raised last time. Let me see what it raised last time. I am curious. Where where the heck is this company? <laughs> I can't even find it. Who's running this? Uh, why can't I see? Who did this? Normally, it's up here, isn't it? Oh, well, it's not a big deal, I guess. Apparently. Um... Yeah, so anyway, this is now actually funding. It looks like they're going through with it. Um, the I don't know why the retailer tier is $15. That seems really random to me. 60 bucks, so you get the regular edition, or 90 bucks to get the Master of City. Anything uh, sub 100 these days, pretty darn good. Has a killer uh, like clock dial thing by the looks of it. It's got the hero minis that look fairly unique and quite well done, I suppose. Um, anytime you see difference in contrast here in the render, I do worry about how miniature focused they are, uh, just because that it seems very rookie. So these are kind of gray and these are like really like bleached white. Um, though it could, maybe they're different colors, like legitimately, but oftentimes when you see stuff like that, it, it just means the renders are different. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, otherwise it looks kind of cool. The city can like change and stuff like that. It kind of reminds me of like a... Bioshock Infinite. Next up, we have IK Fantasy, the Black Keep game. Hell's Gate Dungeon Box. What a name. Anytime you put two hyphens in the name, I believe 
believe you're too many hyphens in by about two. <laughs> 1,500 and they're going for it. Uh, this guy, James, very fascinating. Um, I don't know the guy, but he has this quote, progress over perfection, which I dig actually. But if you look at like his stuff, he, it just, uh, it's like, it's exactly what Kickstarter's for. If you think about it, like all he does is like 100 or less people. He has like this little tiny following, this little niche thing thing but they love what he's doing and he actually like sends out the minis and stuff like that so will he be sending some fantastic game i don't think so but how many people are here 13 people do and by golly i think james is gonna send it to 13 people that's kind of cool it's almost like everybody gets their own little prototype if you think about it it's, that's kind of what it is really now and this is interesting too because it's like 250 dollars um, which is like insane. That's only six. So really only six people have pledged just 250. Everybody else is in for less, it seems like. Um, and maybe there's like add-on stuff for just the minis or something like that. So, but he could easily custom make a prototype thing for 250 bucks for you guys. Um, so yeah, certainly interesting. That's for sure. Um, would I recommend any of you back this? No. Um, I would never recommend this just because it is an unknown, uh, it is an uncertainty, it is a risk. However, I do kind of dig that there's people out there with like 30 friends that just want to have this kind of cool stuff and they can fund it and make it. I think that's actually kind of cool. Moving on, Tempest Hold RPG book and STL collection. Okay, I will have a dedicated sponsored video for this. Um, uh, sponsored because it actually takes money to like print all this stuff. I'm printing a ton of stuff. Here's just one example, one little tease, but you guys will see everything. Um, it, it, well, not everything, but a good chunk of stuff. Guys, this is a really, really cool one. I really dig it. And they got a whole RPG side of it too. The RPG stuff looks legit from what I can tell. Like it actually looks pretty cool. I got this dwarf guy. He's awesome. I got some of these people and some of these people and um, a ton of minis, but then also a ton of terrain and the terrain is really, really nice. I've been printing it all in resin, by the way. I'm going to start putting a little bit of it in FDM. It can print in both easily, easily. All this rubble pile. I got some of those, um, all the wall ruins and the, the, um, some of the buildings, they have like, you know, destroyed buildings and stuff, cargo and containers and supplies and tiles. And this is, and look at this, this is an insanely sized campaign. And you can, if you just wanted the printing 65 Canadian, which is like, I mean, that, that that's like Chuck E. Cheese money, right? So, <laughs> um, so if you wanted the STL, let's see, let's get here. Early bird STL only. 53 bucks, 53 real dollars, uh, and then you get a ton of stuff. So quite impressed with that. I've been impressed with um, all of their stuff that they've done in the past too. Like they've done really good, I've covered their games before and uh, or their uh, STL campaigns before. This time they actually have an RPG attached to it all, even better. So super cool there, definitely. Next up, we have Glim and Gorn, Very Evil Temple. This is like an RPG style thing for sure. It's all a like one inch base stuff, but they have a lot of scatter terrain stuff too. And you can only buy the scatter terrain. So if you're wanting to print stuff to pimp out like Conan or Arena or Tenaris or any of these other fantasy board games where you want different railings and stuff like that, if you wanted your you know, pillars and stuff like that. This could go in massive darkness and all that. It'd be way better than any of the pillars are giving you. Um, you can get some really cool um, scatter stuff for your fantasy RPGs, my opinion, with stuff like this. This is huge for that. Uh, super cool. And again, you can get it for like just that, for like 35 bucks. So uh, I think that's pretty neat as well. All right, moving on. We have some celestial news, some Twisted Fables news. I want to go and let you guys know about this now. This is a live stream that Byron did. You can see a celestial mini there, and you can see how big it is. That's a Deep Madness mini. That's a celestial mini. Um, he's not even the biggest one there. It's going to be hips. It's gonna, you're going to have to build it like Kingdom Death Monster. You're going to have to store it like Kingdom Death Monster. Read on a shelf because of how big they are. Um, it's kind of like a StarCraft, WarCraft kind of thing. You have 
uh, buildings that can produce units. And then these units have these like general heroes. These are the big 75 millimeter and up people. Um, as you do as kind of a skirmish uh, war game kind of style thing on there. It sounds like it's going to be campaign based. There's going to be expansions, all that kind of stuff. It'll be next year. Um, I think probably Q1, I think is what they said. So I guess we'll see. Um, there will also be a Twisted Fables expansion they might be working on, like Beauty and the Beast, stuff like that they'll be including, so that sounds kind of cool. And there will be more Deep Madness because it's their bestseller, of course there will be more Deep Madness. Um, it sounds like they're not doing Dawn of Madness style stuff, but actually Deep Madness stuff. I don't know if it'll be like Faces of the Sphere stuff where they just added an expansion plus a reprint, or if it's like a 2.0 or something like that. Not sure. Anyway, there's your info there. Moving right along, Kingdom Come Deliverance, the board game. This actually had a little bit of an update, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys it real quick. Uh, as you can see, this I'm not even going to click to read more. It's a lot of pictures. This is pretty much what you want to see, though. This is the actual. I, I think there's one better picture of the game itself right around here. It is app driven, by the way. So for you guys that care about it like I do, it's an instantly a no. If you guys don't mind, well, okay, that might give you some unique experience. It is based off a of video game series anyway. The minis look quite nice though. I mean, right now, like that guy's staff is like way too skinny, right? But design, sculpt, idea wise, the same with like whatever bow she has behind her or whatever. But either way, it still looks kind of cool. But it's it's it, it's a bit off too. Moving on, we have Monster Apocalypse, the board game. This comes out on the second, so very soon. I am getting an uh, the game to uh, unbox and play and tell you guys about it, but it is late. Um, but I'm getting a very special edition of it, so I can't wait to share it with you guys. Stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can see that. It'll be a different unboxing than you have seen from pretty much most content creators, I feel. Uh, it, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool copy. So I'm excited to see it. Um, I'm excited to get my hands on it and let you guys know about it. But let's go ahead and talk about it right now real quick. I'm just going to summarize this stuff. I went ahead and read all this for you. Essentially, you have two phases. You have essentially the monster and the unit uh, stuff. The unit stuff, you're moving it from the unit to the monster. And it's typically like one die activates the little guys, two dies uh, get the elite guys. And you're trying to do several things with them. Put them on like these red blocks here. Um, but you can also do stuff like put them around a building. I think it's probably in a GIF form more than likely. Um, yeah, so you can put them on like the, the purple stuff, right, to do different buffs and stuff like that. You can put three around a building to own that. This game is very much a... Um, uh, owning different parts of the map in an important way. And uh, what a, one of the things it allows you to do, especially like the buildings, is it allows you to deploy closer to your enemy, right? So you don't have to move as, as much and waste as much time. Um, it's kind of like an engine building a little bit because you're building up these dice, you're busy taking away dice from your opponent, and you're busy trying to utilize those dice to make more, to do better, to make more, to do better, etc. Kind of in that cycle. They made this uh, player aid dice pool player board thing. So it has both the player aid with the board. So you have your dice pool and your monster power unit. And then you have everything you can do there. The power, the, like the um, uh, big kaiju uh, monster attacks are all right here. So you pretty much have everything explained. It looks like they streamlined that quite nicely, which looks cool. And again, it just looks cool too. So there's that too. So yeah, excited to see that for sure. Hesopia is finally coming out. I have already done an unboxing of this. I will do a review for you guys. Again, subscribe if you want to see that. Um, looks pretty interesting to me though. I have not played it yet, but I have read the rule book, so we're getting close. Moving on from that, we have Rogue Angels. I showed this briefly to you. I've gone ahead and played it. It's coming out though February, so that'll be in my video in early December where I go over everything I know of coming out next year. Again, subscribe if you want to see that video as well. It's a big one, typically my biggest video of the year. Um, I played this, I had a lot of fun. It is standee only because as you can see, there's information on the standees. It would be a, uh, a, 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 we'd have to have boards essentially on the side and kind of refer to that if you were to um, get rid of the standees and do minis, essentially is I think what you'd have to do. Uh, very interesting game, very fun game. I enjoyed it. It is Destructive Legacy, though, so you will be doing permanent sticker stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Or you can be like what a lot of people do with that anyway. Says, uh, no, I'll just do a, a, a whiteboard laminate thing or some junk like that, right? There's normally still ways around it, but um, it's very focused on its story. It's very Mass Effect-like. Uh, it definitely get the vibes of Mass Effect in it. It's very sleek. It's got that RPG style thing. Even its story elements read like a screenplay for like a video game or a movie. So, uh, and like, in like an interesting way. I liked it. I liked it. And I had a lot of fun with the game too. It was, it was a cool game. Um, it had a cool setting, cool story. I dig it. Um, except for that, except for that disruptive legacy. Not ever gonna buy anything that has that, sadly. So just like out of principle, if nothing else. Moving on, we have Totems and Taboos. If you are uh, offended by, I guess, anything that uh, trivializes religion, then this is definitely not for you. Um, but it actually seemed kind of cool. I love the world culture stuff on there. One of the coolest trips I had was to a mosque in college. I thought that was fascinating. So I dig this kind of stuff. Um, and like a non, like, like, I, I think the, um, the push here is kind of anti-religion a little bit. It's very much, uh, focused on the negativity of religion, of manipulation and all of this kind of stuff. Um, which is, you know, typical, I suppose. But I think it's honestly kind of interesting that, uh, it, it still makes it kind of a good talking point. You're essentially trying to build your, your, your totem, the, the highest, right? Your, your stack of, of, uh, of, of dice. And you do that by like gaining, uh, you know, essentially followers and making sure they don't follow other. It seems interesting. So, uh, I'll be actually looking into it. I probably won't be backing it, uh, just because not everybody that I know would agree with the theme. But, um, uh, I think it's, I think it's kind of cool to explore that a little bit. Uh, definitely something that I would, wouldn't have anything else on my shelf like that. Slay the Spire of the Board Game. Look, I'm throwing this, I don't know when this is coming out. It says coming soon, but it said coming soon for like three months now. So I don't know. Then you figure out what soon means. <laughs> Moving on, Trinity of Brain. This is coming out November 2nd. I kind of showed you guys this. It looks kind of interesting. It's kind of like an area control game. You're building up cities. So as you can see in this spinny thing that will make you dizzy, you can uh, kind of uh, upgrade cities and do stuff like that. Here are like the minis on there. You can see there's some dice play and play as well and all the information you need on this kind of like screen in front of you, which I do kind of dig as well. So kind of interesting. It'll be uh, cool to see how this actually plays out. All right, next up we have the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Oh my gosh, we have price points and a whole picture of the freaking game. Oh my gosh. Okay, so first let's look here. What do you get in each tier? There's a base game tier that just has Skyrim, the board game, and 82 pounds, 68 pounds. Okay, look, it's up here <laughs> for real money. Okay, the base tier is 112 bucks. Okay. And uh, want the gameplay content plus all expansions. All expansions being the Dawn Guard and From the Ashes expansion. So two expansions. Uh, that'll get you 192. So sub 200 for a gameplay all in. Uh, so it's not bad for gameplay all in. Now, if you want the miniature upgrade set, I don't know what that means. The neoprene mat, I think we all know what that means. And a metal gold septums. If you want all of that, then that'll hit you an extra hundred bucks to get you at 300 for the deluxe all in everything tier. Uh, so, but everything will be on add-ons. You can customize it as you see fit as well. So that's kind of cool. I, I, I kind of dig that. Also, they said they're trying to make it, um, it's essentially shipping friendly for a fairly shipping friendly too, which is kind of cool. And the, the tier, let me go to the project here, uh, or the timeline is very interesting. Check this out. Oh, here's the whole game, by the way. So plenty of tokens, all this stuff. They have an email out to me. I apologize, guys, if you're watching this at Modifius. I have not responded. I will. I've been very busy with this house thing. I had an open house all weekend. I was barely even home. It's It's been a mess. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be over soon. Okay. Watch this from 95 USD. That's, that's freaking sweet. Um, first wave shipping. Take a look at, okay, so yeah, it says draw an event card each turn, explore caves, mines, tombs, runes, and the cities. 
Uh, attempt chain of quest cards and claim rewards. Change future gameplay with each decision. Defeat your enemies for experience and treasure. Level up and learn new unique skills. Enchant and upgrade your gear and strongholds and meet interesting characters. Go on side quests and gain components and rewards. That all sounds lovely. Look at this. So they've been developing this since 2018. And the game found is November 2021. And they are wanting to fulfill by August 2022. That's a quick turnaround. In other words, that look, their game found campaign November, production starts December. This game is done. It just needs to be made. So now getting this here is a crapshoot, but it's just, it's already ready. It's done. That's awesome. So I definitely want to get my hands on this if I can. And it's actually, I think, rather unfortunate that they didn't do actual physical prototypes. If it's a done game, you could have sent this out and I think it done quite well especially because you've like i've actually played fallout wasteland warfare and it's really well done like it's a lot of fun i really enjoyed fallout wasteland warfare i didn't play it enough to actually get um a review out because i wasn't as, as much into tabletop gaming now i play 40k and all that kind of stuff my wife does my son does my daughter does so i could easily get this to the table more often now but at this point a review is so late it's whatever but very well done. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't, there they had two different kinds of minis too. They had the regular like plastic and then they had resin. And I'm wondering if that's the upgrade that they're talking about here. Either way, super cool. Oh, and they're trying to do VAT free. Unbreakable, too many bones, $2.3 million. This thing has exploded at, to the surprise of no one. Um, it, it's very popular game. A lot of people really, really enjoy it. I have looked more into it. It is definitely too abstract for me. Um, I can't even tell what's going on when I'm looking at it. Like, like I've had it, exp like I've, I've watched videos that kind of explain it. So I kind of get it now, but it's, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> unfortunate, I suppose, because the mechanics themselves seem really neat and I dig that. But I, I can't really get into it, if that makes sense. She looks like a Harry Potter teacher. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, look, do, you, do you see all these, like, stretch goals, by the way? Like, they've unlocked a ton of stuff. So, yeah, there is a lot here. A lot. I'm still scrolling. It's, yeah. If you want a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of game, you can, you can definitely get here and get it. Lords of Ragnarok, 1.1 million, also broke 1 million. There's been, like, like what, three campaigns that have broken a million, and there's almost going to be a fourth that broke a million? It's crazy right now. It always is. Every fall is just so insane. If you are a first-time creator, don't make something in the fall unless you know this is going to be huge. Like, you know it's going to be huge, like an Osworn kind of thing. Because otherwise, dang. <laughs> um, that being said... There are some, like, I, I dig the swords here, right? Um, there are some things I like, but for the most part, I dislike the art style, the sculpt design. Um, and, and I don't mean that as, like, an insult. I, I mean, I think they, they're doing a very competent job. It's just not for me. It doesn't excite me. It seems too busy. I don't want to paint any of them. They all look like a chore to paint to me. Like, I, I can't stand when they're this busy. Uh, one of my patrons showed a... Like, yeah, this right here, this Children of Loki, Fenrir, but like, first of all, his jaw is like super huge. It's like way down here. And then there's like, there's just so much stuff that I, f I feel I, when looking at it, I can barely tell what it is, you know, like, I guess that's a dog. I mean, I don't know. There's like, there's nets and there's chains and there's paneling and there's grates and there's circuitry, and there's a sword, and then there's like this other plink stuff with chains around that, and then the jaw way down here. And it's it's to me it's just too much. It reminds me of the the uh, the um, a cracking unboxing of Hero Quest. If you guys know that that meme meme video where you know it talks about like this is a gargoyle, and it shows the playing gargoyle. It's like this is an abomination. This is a Games Workshop gargoyle with like a bajillion different things on it and junk like that. It's like you can't even tell what I'm looking at. Um, that's what I feel about a lot of this kind of stuff. It just feels like there's so much stuff there. Um, they're they're going like come on. Like I thought Ankh was like that too, and they showed Anubis with like twelve layers of detail on him, and like on his waist, it's like well there's a chain. And underneath that chain is a satchel. Underneath that satchel is another chain. Underneath that chain is his skin. And underneath that is a wound. And underneath that is his um uh you know ribs. And underneath that is like these bugs coming out of it. And then inside of those bugs, it's like no no too, no no I don't want to paint this tiny little bug. 
It's too much. It's too much. I love painting a lot more simplified and streamlined miniature designs. Like I think this stuff like way back from like Conan paints great just because it has just enough detail that it tells me what it is without being too fussy. Um, so I'm not being drawn in by that, which is unfortunate. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Well, that's a thing. <laughs> Alex, are you okay? You don't have to play with Jesse. If he's, if he's abusing you, blink once. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. So I, I hear the gameplay is, uh, improved. So that's awesome since Hellas, uh, which uh, most 2.0s are. Um, obviously the miniature component's gonna be improved. E-Star has improved a ton. They still do a lot of simplification of it, but the detail-wise is there in the vast majority of them. They typically have a few kind of iffy ones these days, which is great. Just means everybody gets a better product, so. Um, but yeah, I'm not drawn in by this. Like, either fields I was all about. I was, I went all in on either fields. Um, or the Ragnarok, not so much when it comes to theme. Okay, next up we have Obscure War Kickstarter. This is coming out November 26th. I showed this off a few videos ago. Essentially, you have this big old grid. You're like these like vampire people, were it's essentially vampires versus werewolves. Um, but you lay down these cards and each of the cards have these little circle areas that you put minis on it and it allows you to manipulate your units to where either they are now portals or it allows you to you know charge up with while on fire or you know do all this other various stuff so you're you have these miniatures in this kind of plain battlefield looking area and then you're playing these cards that stay on the board as far as i can tell that kind of manipulate things so uh the the, the game board is kind of changing a lot there which is kind of cool i can kind of dig that Moving on from that, we have Wild Realms. This is coming out in seven days at time of recording, so a little bit less than a week for you guys. And it's got booster packs. Um, I really dig the art style up here. I think that's awesome. It's essentially Pokemon, but with real uh, animals. So uh, how it actually plays, I don't know, but with 60 plus unique animals, um, with black core cards from the get-go they're oversized so they're actually quite large um i 252 cards of them it sounds like there's a lot so i dig that i love the variety my daughters would freak out over that um, i can have no idea how it plays or anything but wanted to mention it to you guys all right next up this is actually from Sinjutsu. I just wanted to mention this if you go visit and like at stone sword Games UK, it also says games suck, but whatever. Um, <laughs> if you visit their Facebook, that's Stone Sword Games UK. Um, every, for every like, they will donate um, a almost dollar. <laughs> it's actually more than uh, anyway. Um, to to Dogs Trust, so to uh, essentially a a, a charity, uh, which is awesome, and they are doing that until five p.m on November 12th, so until the Sinjutsu uh, campaign ends. So go over there and give it a like. Even if you take it away afterwards, make them donate more money. I think that's awesome. And uh, anytime the industry is doing stuff like this, I want to mention it. Um, I'll speak of which, I'll, I'll cover something over in just a, just a moment. Kabula was canceled. As you saw, I was actually backing this. Um, so I, I was super excited actually to print these guys out and paint them, especially with the Mickey Yummy and stuff like that. That'd be freaking sweet. Um, they are going to be coming back. They got a lot of feedback. One of the things they definitely have, what did I say here? I don't have another game like this. When it comes to both game mechanics and the theme, honestly, this deserves a spot on many shelves. I did say that. I remember seeing that actually. <laughs> hey, look at that. They're not lying. Um, no, uh, they are going to be, have actually minis for all of the enemies from the get go before they were doing STLs and the kind of the, the difference between that wasn't a lot. Also, Besides, I was the only person really at my size of a YouTube channel showing this any attention, um, which is, I think, unfortunate, um, but it, it is what it is. And so I think they needed a few more people to kind of to actually take a look at it. I was surprised by how legitimate of a game it was. Um, it wasn't just a meme. And so I, I think focusing on the game will definitely help um, the, not just the, 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 the booty tokens, which are hilarious, of course. Um, 
so yeah, I don't, it, it's 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 interesting. It, it's definitely a. Um, I can see why it could be a tough sell. Um, although they also had plenty of plans that were going to have a conspiracy theorist hero. That sounds awesome. Um, I wish them the best of luck. I think it'll probably be next year before we see this again. And finally, this is for um, Batman uh, Escape from Arkham uh, Prison. And uh, this is by Night Models. As you can see, they showed a new miniature here for Batgirl. It looks amazing. They are doing some awesome looking dynamic sculpts. Super excited to see it. I wish the um, told us more about gameplay. They do have some blogs, by the way, on their website. I do wish they sent out review copies just because at the end of the day, they're fairly new to the board game industry and not well known for sure about it. Besides Harry Potter, um, that was kind of their last big one that they, I think they really did. Um, it, it would been it would benefit the community a lot to know exactly how this plays, like how good is this actually going to be, um, gameplay wise, mini wise. They got it. However, it's delayed until November. It was going to be out October twenty sixth, I believe. So unfortunately, we're getting in touch with all of you to share some bad news. That has affected the entire Night Models family. This past weekend, one of the game designers has an accident and is in serious condition. Today, we're awaiting to see the evolution of him, but we do not feel strong enough to launch the Kickstarter project without him. So they are delaying that. Um, so thoughts and prayers, obviously, to uh, the, the designer and their family. Um, I've contacted them to see if I can't get anything shared with you guys when it comes to maybe family dinners, when it comes to maybe even just flowers and cards or go fund me for medical stuff or whatever. I don't know the situation at all. I just went ahead and reached out to them. If I do find out something about it, you guys will know right away. I'll make a, a social media post about it probably at first. And I'm, I'm sure I'll tell you guys about it in a, one of my future videos. So uh, either way, uh, yeah, they, they should take their time and, and, and do what they need to do. And I'm sure we're all sitting here uh, waiting as patiently as we can for a lot of Batman goodness. So, uh, yeah, let's focus on what's important, obviously. And just supporting each other, I guess, at, as an industry. You know, I talked about the Sinjitsu thing about how, like, um, even as a reviewer who didn't like the game, I don't hate them, and I, and I want to make sure that they didn't drive any hatred towards me because at the end of the day, we're all in this together, right? We're all just enjoying games sometimes different games than each other and that's okay too and we're all people and so people can get hurt and we should care about that um people can fail and try again and we should care about that people can make a board game for 17 other people or six other people we should care about that i think that's awesome so anyway i wanted to leave on that note not 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 necessarily a negative note about the injury but just about caring about others so uh let's today care about others uh let's 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 have a good day everybody and uh i hope to see you guys again really soon i will be having some more reviews i told you i'll have a little video about this i'll have a cool unboxing harakiri has been shipped it will be here soon there is an exclusive it's something big i'm excited to show you guys about that uh, I have some information I'm going to be telling you guys about it. There is an announcement to make there as well. So there's a lot of reasons to click that subscribe button. So if you haven't already, feel free to do that. It does help the channel out. It allows me to be able to communicate to other companies and say, hey, look, this this is this many people interested because it's not just necessarily views, but it's these are people that actually want to see my stuff, right? Subscribers are a little more sticky. They're a little bit more of a statement of, I like the King of Average videos and I'd like you to send him stuff so that he can show you more stuff or work with him or give him information or whatever it might be. It allows me to make these videos that much better for you guys. So thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again really soon. Bye.